Hi, thanks for joining us for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. Everyone likes a great looking lawn. Today we're going to take a look at several varieties of turf grass. Also, there are some plants that are more effort than they are worth. Today we will talk about plants to avoid and what to replace them with. That's just ahead on The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwin's Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation The WKNO Production Fund The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to The Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Booker T. Lee. Booker is a UT Extension agent right here in Shelby County, and Carol Reese will be joining us later. Hi, right, Booker. We're at the Shelby County Extension Turf Plot Demonstration. Yes, glad to be out here, too. Thank you for coming out here to do this here, oh, No problem, no problem. Yeah, because you know, in Shelby County, we get a lot of phone calls. You know, people grow a lot of grass here, and then they be calling us what grass do well in Shelby County. So we decided to put a turf plot out and let folks see the different varieties of grass that grow here. Good idea. And and uh, and, and then these are what we got right here now. And if you look at it, we put in six varieties right now. Okay. We're gonna put in some more later on. We should have at least overall ten different varieties of grass that grow good. here in Shelby County. And what's so good about it, you can get all these grass here in Shelby County. Good. Locally. And local. That's mm -hmm. good. So we really appreciate that. Okay. And uh, we ain't go through them right now. Okay. Um, Let's do that. First one, you got uh, Bermuda, uh, Discover Bermuda grass. You see it have a dark, it have a dark green color here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the wear resistant, very good. Excellent, good, and wear resistant. On all our grass that we have here now, they need a soil pH between 6.0 and 6.5. Okay. And it's a real pretty dark green grass here. Kind of like, not a real fast growing grass. It's kind of grow kind of slow here in there. So, and, and the, this plot here was started here in last year in September. Okay. Discover Bermuda grass. Okay. When I say Bermuda grass, everybody knows about a warm season grass. Right. Mm -hmm. Very good grass. And the height, you want to keep it somewhere between uh, at least about two inches tall. Okay. And then you can do your lawnmower and put it on the side there and keep it that tall. As you see, like maybe have a little weeds in it now, but it's, it, you can easily spray and get the weeds out of there. Okay. It's a very good grass. It's a um, dark green color. You can see the dark green in there. More like a dark green, blue light kind of grass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice color. All right, you ready to go to the next ready, plot? I'm ready to go. Okay. All right, Booker, so what do we have here? We have Celebration. This is another variety of Bermuda grass, and I said Bermuda grass, and they're still into my warm season grass. Okay. Uh, see, this is Bermuda grass. This, this has got a dark blue color. Yeah. You can kind of look at it in the tail here. And this is a, is a very good spring green up. Mm -hmm. Early in the springtime, you see probably when your first grass start to green up in there. Okay. And one thing about Celebration, it, it uses less fertilizer. You don't do a whole lot of fertilizing on this grass here, and it's still, it's still do well. Oh, that's good. That's uh, a reason to celebrate, huh? <laughs> yeah, celebrate. <laughs> And uh, you want to keep about two inches tall, two and a half inches tall in, in there. And, okay. and the pH is very, in very, in very same, uh, by 6.0 to 6.5. Okay. And one thing about this grass in there, it, it'll do well in what kind of, any kind of soil that you have in your, in your yard. You've got a sandy soil in there to do really good in sandy soil too mm. and everything in there. And a pretty good drought retardant too. Okay. Just, just like a discovered drought retardant. This is a good drought retardant grass too. Uh, fall color, it'll be real pretty fall color in there when it starts going dormant in there. So this is a celebration here, but moody grass in there and everything. You can come out and watch this here and look at it and see what you like about this grass here. All right, you can celebrate. Celebrate. <laughs> All right, you ready to go to the next block? Ready to go to the next one. All right. This is a very good grass here now. Okay. This is a latitude now. Latitude. And I think it's kind of like a new grass there in the in there. We don't hardly see a lot of it here. Okay. But it's a real good grass here. It have a dark green color. You might can look at the color here and see how it's looking. You can definitely tell. And it, this, this Kind of disease resistant, and the spring green up is excellent. Okay. The green up, you see how it look right now here. Got a real good color in there. And go to seeds here, real good and everything. Mm -hmm. It's a really pretty grass. Latitude is a really good grass in there that we have in here. Uh, the mowing height about the same thing, two and a half, two inches tall. Okay. And then during the hot summertime, you might want to keep it just a little higher in there to protect those root system in there. Right. Make sure they in. And water, you know, like I said, all of them probably need about an inch of water a week. Some of them might be a little drought tired than that, but you can give them an inch of water when you're doing great in there. Okay. I see you like this one. I kind of like this yeah. too. You know, if you get to walk on it, you can kind of feel yeah. the, 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 how it feels so soft and kind of in there. 
you can kind of feel the texture in the different than we already walked across. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of like this here, though. And uh, we just see how I perform and how some and how I do well here, so it's good. Okay. And this, we did this here in our so in uh, September. Okay. In last year. We we'll go to the next one. Next one now. Now, Chris, we go to the next one now. This is gonna be something different about this grass here now. The other what well, Bermuda grass. This is a Zoya grass right here. Then uh, and, and the name is Palisade. Okay. No, no, we don't. You don't hear a lot about Palisade. I've heard Palisade. And, you know, Palisade a lot of time. It's going around. People say I love Palisade in mm -hmm. the shade and everything. Do real well in the shade. It do pretty good. It do pretty good in, in the shade and, okay. and stuff in there. But it still need uh, three to four hours of sun a day. Still. It still need three it or four still hours. Still need sun that. Day. Okay. One thing about Zoya grass, it's a warm season grass. Mm -hmm. It's just like Bermuda grass. It's go dormant in, in fall of the year. But don't fertilize your Zoya grass until after June the 1st. I know you haven't done that, so we don't do wow. that in, in there. So if you do it before June the 1st, what'll happen? You're putting on more disease problems. Ah, that would happen. You're putting on a lot of disease okay. problems on there. So this is what you're doing. If you ain't, uh, June the 1st, be a good time to do that. In so there. after June the 1st. Yeah. I never and, knew that before. That's good. Yeah, and also the soil pH between 6.0 and 6.5. Okay. And I said we talk about soil pH a lot. But the only way you can tell the soil pH is by doing the soil test on there. Okay. Mm -hmm. The more and higher, we can go to a Zorgia grass here. You might want to keep it a little taller, you know, maybe maybe uh, two and a half to three inches taller in there sometimes, especially if you get real hot weather. Okay. It'll, it'll, it'll do good in there. Uh, Zoya grass need very little fertilizer when you do start growing in there. So this is a very good grass here, but it still need three to four hours sun a day. Still. A lot of people think yeah. it do good in shade, but it do need three to four hours sun a day. Okay. But it's very good, very good shade grass that you want to try and see how it do. All but right. you come out here and look at it and see how it look out here. Uh, you'd be very happy to come out here and watch it. All right. Yeah, because yeah, you're right. Folks have heard of Palisade. They've been here at Palisade. Yeah, yeah it's very great. And this is where it's looking. In the, and you look at you look at the blade different too, the yeah, wider the blade the and everything in there. See how the blade look in there. Okay. So it's very good. All right. So you're going to check out the, the next, next one? Yeah, let's see right. the next one then. Hey, I heard you talk a lot about Royal Zorja. Royal is good. This is Zorja grass also too now. We talk about Royal. It's just like Bermuda grass. is a warm season grass. But one thing about this raw, you can you feel the, you feel the difference I can. on here? Can I sure feel, can. feel good, don't you? I can, I can and, feel the uh, difference. Raw and palisade, but raw is very excellent shade. Okay. And you have some shade here, but you got to keep water on it though. You like a lot of, lot of water, and it requires a lot of nitrogen fertilizer too. Once it starts out, uh, the height, you want to keep it about three inches tall. But one thing about raw, it's very slow growing. <laughs> you want to worry about doing a whole lot of cutting on there. So. Okay. Uh, the wear resistant is good. A lot of times people have these when they have concentrate things there and the shade yeah. of the tree, they put some raw zorge out there. Look at the color in there. Look at the color in there. Look at that dark green mm -hmm. color in that raw. Mm -hmm. It looks good, don't it? It's good. And you just walk on how it feels, how the texture feels on there. You yeah. can feel it different in this in this, in this raw. Almost it's, like carpet. But like carpet yeah. grass in there. This is a good grass in raw. Okay. Raw zorge. You want to try that? A lot of shade retired. All right. Okay, you, now. You want to check out the next one? Check out the next one here. Okay. G. Oh. This is Zoya too. Now this is called Geo Zoya. And uh, you probably not heard a whole lot about this here. No, I haven't heard a whole lot about this Zoya no, here. I haven't. But it's a, it's a real, it's a real good Zoya here and everything. And they do, it do well. One thing, it, it, it kind of slow growth grass in there. Don't grow real fast in there. You see, how you have a, like a dark green color. It might not be darker somewhere, but it have a dark green color in, in there. And it's good for home use too. In there, everything okay. in there. Cause a lot of people want they. That, that, that uh, Zorgia grass in the yard. And this this is kind of like a new variety. We just trying this out too and see how it do it. So this is something we don't know that much about right not, now. Not right now, but we're we we trying, we trying to find out a little more about okay. this here and everything. So we're trying out here in the trial to see how it how do. So probably about a year or so, and uh, we can see how it do out here, how we're going to do it in the heat, summer, and also in the winter time when it start coming in. On June 8th. Here we go, yeah. On June hey. 8th, it's, <laughs> it's going to be open to the public here. Okay. You can come out here. We're going to have folks come out here and talk about it and see how it do, see how it do out here and then look at it. They can walk on it. We'll have folks in talk about it. I'll be out here to ask a question about it. And then we don't have mailbox and things out here. That people come, we don't have information mailbox. They can come out and get stuff on the weekend. And they have a question, they can call us back on this here. Okay. But on June the 8th from 9 to 12, they can come out here and, uh, and, and, and see the grass. All right. Yeah. Well, I hope the folks come on out, Boogie, because this is a real good turf plot demonstration. We appreciate you doing this. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Appreciate it. There are a number of gardening events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you. All right, Ms. Carroll, plants to avoid and their replacements. What do you want to start with that? 
Gosh, I want to say, where do you want to start? Because as, a, as an agent, we get the calls over and over and over about the same plants, don't we? So, well, let, let me toss this to you. You know about the Bradford pears, right? Well, how many times do we hear that about Bradford's and how many times have we been talking about replacing it? But finally, we're getting to the point, I think, that we're seeing fewer and fewer as they go out. People so are finally we're getting there, right? I think okay. so. Good. Okay. Um, so Bradford's are one, of course, we need to talk about replacing not only the fact that they're brittle and break, but that they reseed like mad and mm -hmm. become a real problem in the landscape. But let's kind of just lump that in with some other spring blooming trees okay. uh, that we continue to see problems with. Uh, I love our native dogwood, but it's really picky and difficult to grow. I've killed them. <laughs> you've, I, you've killed them? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and every time I ask the audience, how I many of you have killed dogwoods? You know, you'll get a big show. And everybody's like, oh. Uh, yeah. um, so I'm not telling people, you know, not to try because, of course, it's such a wonderful tree and, and one of the, uh, Tennessee's best, actually our biggest production tree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we've done a lot of research on that. But uh, and also I'm going to throw the ornamental cherries in there because yes, they're yes, spring yes. blooming trees and mm -hmm. we know when we get a call about we, a cherry. We already know what yeah. it is. And we know it's going to be canker or bore Boar, and, right. and that you know we're really lucky to get a few years of pleasure out of them. Yes. So if people want a more durable tree, let's talk about some spring blooming trees that would be more durable. Um, number one, <clears throat> the dogwood hybrids, if you really want the look of our native dogwood, they have crossed them with Coosa dogwood. Mm -hmm. And Coosa is a later blooming, and it's a great dogwood if people want to grow an easier dogwood. Mm -hmm. The Cornus Coosa uh, will bloom actually about now, about when the oak leaf hydrangeas start to bloom, with the leaves fully on it. So it's a different time, but it's a good tree, easier to grow, has edible fruit. But they've hybridized that with our native dogwood to increase some, some disease resistance. So you look for the Constellation or the Stellar series okay. and find the ones that have the Coosa blood in there and that makes them a little bit easier bit. Okay. So that would be one. Then the other would be um, fringe trees. Yes. Love the fringe trees. And we have both our Native American fringe trees, sometimes called Grancy Graybeard, or we have the Chinese fringe tree. And I actually prefer the Chinese. Sorry, oh. sorry, sorry. <laughs> but it's a little showier. The flower's a little whiter and brighter, and it stands up above the foliage, whereas the native one is a creamy white and kind of drips down in this bearded shape. And it's a beautiful tree. If you got room, get both. <laughs> but if I could only have one, I'm going with Chinese, Chinese just because it's showier. And the foliage to me is a little more interesting. We actually collect both at the station. Let me ask you about this. Yeah. Emerald ash borer. Uh -huh. Is that going to be a problem? I hope not, but you're good to ask that because the emerald okay. ash borer is also known to attack uh -huh. fringe trees because they are in the same family. Right, same family. They are in the same family okay. as the uh, ash. Uh, you can protect it if you okay. decide to, but we also find that that emerald ash borer prefers larger trunk trees. Okay. So I don't know, maybe it kills all the ash. It may take aim. My big hope is it'll take aim at privet because privet's also <laughs> in the same family. Right. So we can only hope. That's right. Again, it likes larger uh, plants, but that may be the end of privet. For Maybe we can hope for that anyway. Okay. <laughs> uh, also, some of the magnolias, the deciduous magnolias, and if you want the white flower, then I would look at Wada's memory. Wada. Okay. Wada's memory has got a beautiful uh, pyramidal shape that would remind you of the Bradford, but it won't break up. It's very durable to grow in almost any situation. It's one all kinds of awards okay. for its uh, its durability. Uh, then let's talk about shrubs. Yeah. What do we get calls a lot about? <laughs> the Japanese the hollies. Japanese hollies, of course. And the boxwoods. And the boxwood. yeah. So those of are course. you know your tight evergreen shrubs that a lot of people like to use for foundation plantings mm -hmm. or for formal accents in the garden. And uh, usually they're going to suffer from root issues, yes. uh, poorly sided or overwatered where if there's any kind of drainage issue, then it's going to succumb. And I think the Japanese hollies are even worse than the boxwoods. Yeah. You think so? I do. Yeah. I, I wouldn't put a... I, Hellerai, <laughs> Hellerai holly looks great in a pot and almost never again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just, I don't like... Now, boxwoods, I think, have a certain place, so I would, I would probably still use a box, boxwood if I really sited it properly with okay. perfect drainage. They like a little bit of protection from the hot sun because they'll burn and bronze up. They like a little bit of protection from the I don't think people realize that, winds. though. They do actually need some protection from the hot sun. Yeah, they do. If, okay. you're gonna, if you're going to plant a boxwood in the sun, then you need to go with Korean box or Japanese little leaf okay. box. But the, the formal English box that a lot of people around here call American box or common box really would like some shade. Mm -hmm. It would really like some shade and protection from cold winter wind. 
uh, but perfect drainage. So yeah. now if I want a tight, roundy, moundy plant, you know where we're mm. going with this. <laughs> well, so why not use the dwarf yellow pine? It's a tough little dude. It gives you the same look. It's just so cheerful about performing in a wide range of soils. So that's where I'm going with it. I'm, I'm not saying let's try to save this. You should yank that out. Just get it out of there. With the dwarf yellow mm -hmm. pine. And there are more than one cultivar. There's right. uh, Bordeaux and Nana and several different ones that are and, out there. And you know what else with, with the boxwood? <clears throat> the blight. Mm -hmm. you know, now there's something new coming down That's the pipe. Right. You know? We've got new diseases uh, all the time. How about that? And, and, and that would remind us, mix it up is yeah, the main yeah. issue. We should never put all our eggs in one basket. Okay. But good, uh, good. sometimes we are looking for that. Uh, a lot of times we'll hear my hydrangea didn't bloom. Yes. My hydrangea yes, didn't bloom. Yes. Uh, so the good news is that there are breeding now for these reblooming or remontant types. So I would go with those newer types that will rebloom for you. Uh, Endless Summer was the first to come out, but now Mike Durr has used that in his breeding programs. Penny Mac, hmm. there's lots of good ones out there that are rebloomers. Um, the one called Dooley, found in Coach yeah. Dooley's yeah, yard. Coach Vince Dooley, Dooley's yeah. yard is a very good one, <laughs> reblooming type. Uh, as long as they're well sighted. Um, with good drainage, you should get good performance out of those remonted or reblooming types. Okay. Well, another one that I hate to see used, uh -oh. and people love it because of that brilliant deep purple foliage, the purple leaf plums. Oh. Yep. It is a it's a pretty color though. It is it's, a pretty just, one. And it stands out. You it, know, does, in the it does. It ah. does. Um, they they're a plum. Yeah. It's going to get the bore. Yeah, the original the plant's probably going to die short order. But don't worry, we've got <laughs> hundreds of them left because they sucker like mad right. uh, and come up from the roots, not just mm. in your yard. They can come all the way over from root suckers in your neighbor's yard. And I've taken many, many a picture of little purple plummets <laughs> coming up through people's turf grass. So uh, suckers like crazy. If you quit mowing, it, it'll become an entire forest of purple leaf plum. I've been around old homes oh. where you can't see the house for the purple oh. leaf plum thicket. Yeah. So I would recommend instead you go with the Burgundy Laura Petalums. Oh yeah, I like those. Yeah, they're really like good, them. and some mm. of them get quite large, mm -hmm. like the yeah, yeah. plum wood, and you could limb it up and turn it into a tree form instead of a large shrub. Mm -hmm. um, and they are breeding now for ones that stay deep purple throughout the, the summer color. months, so that would be a, uh, a good one. All right, and of course Leland, so we want people to mix it up and use instead the green giant arborvitas and some junipers because the Leland's are going to succumb probably to ceridium canker yes. sooner or later. Which is a question that we get a lot a as lot extension agents. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so yeah. mix it up a little bit, yes. you'll be fine. That's right. Thank you for the information, appreciate that. Yes, sir. All right. So what we're about to do now is tie up our tomato plant. We want to get this plant off the ground. So let's go ahead and uh, let me demonstrate to you how we're going to do that. And to tie your tomato plant up, you can use an old shirt. We have here an old sheet, you know, something that's not going to be too heavy. Bring it back here. We're going to tie it up, make a knot. Not going to make it too tight. Just going to make it loose here because we want to give this plant support, but we don't want to restrict the movement of the plant. Okay. Definitely want to get it off the ground because as you well know, Tomatoes have problems with blight. All right, so that's how you tie up your tomato plant. Again, you want to get the foliage off the ground as well as the fruit because you don't want to have to deal with those fungal diseases. All right, so here's our Q&A session. Y'all ready? Ready. ready. All right, here's our first uh, viewer email from YouTube. How about <laughs> that? It's from YouTube. I live in the South. I don't know what type of grass I have, but it turns yellow in the winter. I would like to find a grass that stays green all year. And this is Miss Ann. So, Miss Ann, guess what we have here today? <laughs> we have Booker T. Lee, the grass guy. The grass guy. <laughs> the grass guy. So, she would like to find a grass that stays green year round. What could she use? Well, she want to work. She want to work year round. <laughs> <laughs> I like my grass to go dormant in the, in, uh, in in winter time. Mm -hmm. And she probably has something like Bermuda grass or Georgia grass. Those are warm season grass. They said they're going to turn brown during that time of the year. But she wants something to grow that stay green year round. And she probably go with like a fescue, okay. a cool season grass. And that'll give you some color year round. And, uh, make it, and it'll grow probably during the November months. But it will stay green year round. 
But to me, I like my sword to go kind of rest a little bit <laughs> in, in, in huh? the winter time. But if she want to go with something to work, to cut and mow grass, so she can go with a coos and grass, something like fescue. Something like the, a fescue. The, 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 the thing, though, the fescue's not going to look real good during the, August. During the August. Uh, yeah, August. Right. So you're going to have a little bit of problem unless you keep it really well watered. Mm. And I, I'm with you. I like the I like that wheat kind of color in the winter. I think I it's beautiful. I, I, I have zoysia. Like I, I like and, it. Yeah, and I love that color. So maybe she should tweak her. Yeah, think about like it again, it. especially you know, if she got a lot of a sun in there, in there for the Bermuda grass growing the Tom Brown, it's not going to do real good, a whole lot of good in in in, in, the, in, the, in the summertime because okay. they're getting too hot, getting too heated in there. So cousin grass normally do pretty good in the shaded location. Okay. Kind. Yeah, and she didn't give us her growing conditions. Yeah, but, yeah. But, but she got that grass that turning brown, and she probably got a, a warm season grass like Zoya yeah, Bermuda so. grass there. So. But Miss Ann, enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a it's a trade off. It's a trade off. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I'm, I'm with y'all mm -hmm. on that. I, I don't mind the straw looking Me, color. I do. My no, Bermuda lawn. Mm -hmm. I think it's Especially nice. you don't have no weeds and nothing out there. It, it, it really, it really look good in there. Nice. Mm -hmm. and, 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 since I cut mine twice a week, I like to just rest. <laughs> rest. <laughs> you want to go dormant too, right? I want to go dormant. I want to go dormant. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there you have it, Miss Ann. So here's our next very email. Is it okay to use pine needle mulch around tomato plants? And this is Miss Rebecca Jackson. Oh, <laughs> you're naked right, of woods. Wood. You're naked of woods. So you want to take this one? I, for Rebecca, Rebecca, feel free to use pine needle mulch. You know, there's this myth that gets out there that it'll change the pH. Uh huh. I've heard and that. And we know that vegetables do like a higher pH soil. Mm. That's true. But it changes the pH such a teeny, teeny <laughs> a bit, bit right? over time <laughs> that it's just not going to matter. And it's a great, great mulch for suppressing weeds. Right. Uh, I love it. I love it too, because mm -hmm. you're saying though, it is a key to water with a lot of splash on your tomato plants, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then so you, so you don't rotate the tomato and thing around in your garden area, else. so it shouldn't be a big problem in your tomato plant. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. And another thing I love about it, I can shove a whole uh, there bale of pine needle straw <laughs> in the back, back of, of my <laughs> CRV, oh, okay. which I, you know, the other kinds I can't. Can't do it, no. yeah. So, so you can handle that, huh? I can handle so that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then one thing, let water and stuff be down to that real good, too, so mm -hmm. you do two things for you. Yeah. It's really use good. It. Yeah. Use it. So you can use... Pine needles, that's mulch, Miss mm -hmm. Rebecca. Thank you for that question. Uh, here's our next viewer email. It appears I have different types of Bermuda grass in my lawn. Can you tell me what kind of Bermuda grasses these are? My favorite is this one. It is not string looking, but appears smooth. How can I gain consistency of the lawn over time? And this is Mr. John right here in Bartlett. Okay. So what do you think about that question? Well, the first thing Mr. John need to do is <laughs> on, on June the 8th. Okay. And we, we have we have a, a grass plot identification. Okay. We got some different types of grass out there and he can come out there and look. We don't have about four varieties of Bermuda grass. Mm. Okay. He can come out there and look at them and see which one that he like in his yard. But it seems like he might have some like tilkway or hybrid or something in, in his yard. And one of them could be mixed with maybe look look, look common with Moody could have been in there too, you know, mm -hmm. in there for when you got seeds planted, it might look a lot of different and stuff in there. Okay. And if, if the lawn still out there when they first get the house, he probably might have a common Bermuda grass out there because they probably put that out there in the yard. Okay. But he done mm -hmm. chained around, so it's yeah. a tiff well, tiff green or something in there. Because common Bermuda can be several inches tall right. and mm -hmm. have that stringy okay. look. Yeah. 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 And then your your hybrids will stay that small, so, yeah, so short yeah. and smooth. So. But on June the 8th, now from 9 to 12, we don't have a we got some plots out at, mm -hmm. at the Agro Center. Mm -hmm. And then come out there and look at those different types of grasses that we have. Well, he asked about how to gain consistency. Can he kill the common Bermuda without killing the Tiffway? Yeah, oh. I don't know. It can be kind of tight in there because in there because That's in there. Be so yeah. Yeah, when it spread in there, because both of them go dormant at the same time and it's going to be in there. So it's going to be kind of hard to get Maybe if he let it grow out and get mm -hmm. brushed over the top. Uh, I don't think it's going to be tough. No, yeah. like, if it's yeah. it mixed in together, it's kind of yeah. hard to get rid of it out of there. I think it's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. Which Start. Bermuda do you recommend, though? Do you have one that you like? Well, we, we, we got some varieties out there now. Uh, the latitude beginning to look good out there, too. We okay. have in, in there beginning to come through real good. Latitude? The, the celebration, yeah. Those, got, those are new. I yeah, just celebrate, got celebration out there at our office. We got those two out there now. And they begin to look real good mm -hmm. in, in there. So um, we, we'll see how they come in and do. So we didn't know this this is good. And we're all gonna have another one out there too coming in later on, but Bridge Fort, that's a new variety coming mm -hmm. in too. Those ones some of some of the hybrid Bridge really good. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So we got some good things that he can on June 8th, he can see all the different varieties. He, can see he all might want to kill everything out. <laughs> and just start, and start over, over with a new Bermuda, right? Yeah, then he then, then, to be then he'll know what he have out there. And mm -hmm. what's so good about all these grass that he can, he can get here. Okay, and get yeah. here locally. Get local, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Bermuda grass, Bermuda grass considered to be the number one weed. <laughs> 
Here in Tennessee. I call it Bermuda now, the Hun. There it goes. <laughs> that cab, I don't like grass. I don't. Like she, I, like she like plants. Was she, she actually planted zoysia? I, I like, because zoysia yeah. moves slowly, but Bermuda slowly, yeah. runs into your bed. Runs into your bed. They get in there yeah, quick, huh? So. You, want, you want to do his job and get away. That's right. <laughs> Bermuda the, the Hun. Make home on a mad. <laughs> well, it's, it's looking for your garden soil. Your yeah. garden soil, yeah. yeah. That's what yeah. it's looking for. All right. So, Booker, Ms. Carol, that was fun. It was. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Thank you. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us an email or letter. The email address is familyplot at wkno.org and the mailing address is familyplot 7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee 38016. Or you can go online to familyplotgarden.com. That's all we have time for today. To get more information on things we talked about on today's show, go to familyplotgarden.com. You can also watch videos from past shows. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next week for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, is provided by Goodwinds Landscape and Garden Center, in Germantown since 1943, and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants, plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you.